Hello everyone from beautiful Glencoe in Scotland, from rainy Glencoe. Uh, I don't know if it's the weather, it's been raining non-stop. I don't know if it's because today is my 53rd day on the road, living in the car by myself, and maybe that's starting to take its toll. I don't know if it's because this place is very crowded, there are many more people here than uh, there were farther north. I don't know if it's because the days are getting shorter and shorter, it's the end of September now and there is less than uh, 12 hours of daylight uh, every day, uh, that means that uh, I have more than 12 hours to spend inside the car every night in the darkness and they get very long. Most likely it's just a combination of all of that, but whatever it is, I haven't been feeling it. I haven't been feeling inspired in the last few days and that, that doesn't feel right because I'm in a beautiful place and I should be able to, to make good images and to feel motivated to, to get out even in bad weather, especially in bad weather because I like it. You know, another reason could be that I haven't been filming, I haven't been documenting my adventures here. I'm not sure why, I think it's because there are many people around and I don't feel that good about, you know, filming myself when there are so many people around. Or maybe I just wanted to take a little break because sometimes I wonder if making these YouTube videos is uh, taking away something from my photography. But I think I've come to the realization, even though I kind of already knew this, that making these videos actually helps me quite a bit because when I'm not feeling it on the photography side, at least I can still do something uh, creative with the videos. Anyway, very long story short, my hope here is that by making this video, by talking to the camera again, by recording myself, that will ignite a spark in my motivation and inspiration again so I can make good images of this beautiful place in the time that I have left here. Luckily, I still have four full days, so it should be plenty, to, plenty of time to find interesting things. It's a beautiful view, isn't it? Uh, I'm not entirely sure where I am right now, but I think this is the entrance, the beginning of the Glen, Glen Co. Uh, I came to this little hill here just by the side of the road, just to get away a little bit from there, to have a little bit of solitude, but you can still hear the noise. It's a pretty busy road, a pretty busy place, but the view is totally worth it. It's beautiful here. Um, I've been trying to, to take some photos here. It doesn't really work in square because of, you know, the disposition of the landscape, especially today because we have low clouds, so, so that compresses the landscape even more. So I've been shooting panoramas here and I think it's looking beautiful. I've been shooting more panoramas here in Scotland than I usually do and that's because, well, the landscape really invites you to, to do that, especially on days like today. As I said, the low clouds compress the landscape even more and there are no features here that I can photograph, like a tree or, a, or something that stands out. So it's very hard to find square compositions on views 
like this one. So that's why I'm resorting to the to the panoramas. I use an aspect ratio of 16 by 7. It's very stretched. Uh, so I shoot in both extremes of the range, you know, a square. That is, it's a square. And then very, very um, stretched. I like it that way because it allows me to create very calm and peaceful images with the square format. Your eyes don't move a lot, don't circle around the frame that much. And then the complete opposite, that is a panorama. So your eyes keep going left to right, left to right, and it creates a lot of tension. Uh, but it can be peaceful as well um, if, there are not a, uh, if there are not a lot of elements in the frame, like the image that I just made. That's a beautiful view, yet another one. And this one actually works in a square because of the shape of the mountain. But it could look even better if we had something to contrast against that landscape. And I think we do have it. It's just a little bit farther down this road. It is a beautiful cottage that I'm going to try to capture. It's all right. I mean, it's beautiful, of course. And I'm thinking that I'm gonna go back to the car, grab my ND filters, and take a long exposure of that mountain. It's got a little bit windier now. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to take a long exposure, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna use a prime, as usual, when it's windy. Because when you are using a longer focal length, the uh, shorter or the smaller the lens, the better. A zoom lens like this one, once you extend it a little bit, it's too big and any kind of wind or breeze is going to move it, create vibrations and at, that, at those focal lengths, that is not going to look any good. I'm still using the, the, the zoom lens to decide on which prime. I don't know if it's going to be the 50 or the 35, but yeah the 50 and it's still short i'm gonna use the 50 because it's a safer focal length for long exposures it's gonna be easier in these conditions and i can always crop later sadly i can't still use my case filters these are my favorite filters my preferred filters but i can't use them because i still don't have have i told you about this no i don't think so i i haven't told you but the thing is that a few days ago I dropped my, my camera, my video camera, for the third time on this trip. And this time I did do some damage, uh, sadly. Well, I have a little problem here because yesterday I dropped my video camera for the third time on this trip. I do think that these things are bound to happen when you spend so much time outside in bad weather uh, shooting and especially you know the, the problem with my video camera I didn't drop my stills camera even once not even close the problem with the video camera is the, is the one that I leave behind you know is the one that is filming me when I'm hiking the one that is filming me when I'm taking photos so I'm not paying attention to that camera when I'm you know being filmed in any case nothing terrible has happened yet the first two times was on very um, soft ground yesterday was different though i dropped my camera on hard very solid rock um, nothing really bad happened again but the uh, the filter the adapter ring of the filter took a beating and the filter thread of the lens as well but i put it back on the lens so it looks good it works just fine the problem is that this one, this uh, step-up ring, is the only one I have that I know of. I thought, I swear I had two, but I just took everything out of the car, looked everywhere, and I cannot find the other one. But it's the only one that I have that adapts most of my lenses to the magnetic ND filters that I have from case. Without it, I cannot take long exposure. So what I'm trying to do now is to to get the, um, you see, this is the step up ring and this is the magnetic adapter. It's totally broken. It doesn't work, but I'm hoping that I can rescue the step up ring if I can unstuck 
the magnetic filter from there it's, it's been very very hard but I bought more step up rings online but they're not coming until tomorrow and who knows what time tomorrow probably late in the afternoon it's not a deal breaker for my photography but not being able to take long exposure as well is kind of a big deal I'm using my gloves by the way because I don't want to hurt my hands I'm not able for the love of me to 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 get it out of there it's just totally stuck and as you can see it's just not working <laughs> that is gonna let a lot of light in anyway the thing is that I'm limited to just these filters these are the ice ND filters that I have for my bigger lenses the 20 and the 135 because those are 82 millimeter lenses anyway it doesn't matter I have other filters that I can use right now because I do have the step out rings for them so these are the ones that I'm gonna be using even though uh, I don't like them as much as the other ones all right so there's not much to say here i'm just gonna capture the the mountain that you see over there uh on the top left of the frame more or less the top uh, i mean the bottom left of the frame the top of the frame is gonna be just for the clouds because hopefully i'll i'll capture some motion i think that one minute here should be more than enough because they are moving fast I got some beautiful light right now because the mountains behind the big mountain are looking brighter and that is going to separate them, that is going to create layers and hopefully the clouds will look good and this one will be the image of the morning, I believe. Oh, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I was just talking about it, about how I dropped my camera three times and again, and I lost my other ND filters. I don't have any way to make long exposures right now until tomorrow. As you could see, the ND filters are gone. I think the camera and the lens are fine. I'm going to turn it on now and hope for the best. That noise from the lens was not amazing. This lens is already falling apart. It has been falling apart for a long time, but it just it just doesn't want to die. And it's not dead yet. It still works fine. It makes a lot of noise, but that uh, did before. Let me try. The camera seems to be okay. It takes photos. So it could have been much, much worse, but come on. I'd love to say lesson learned, but obviously I did not learn my lesson the last three times. Anyway, the filters couldn't have chosen a better place, a more beautiful place to die. They made a beautiful last image. They were in the process of making one that could have been better, but the, the last one they made was very beautiful, so I appreciate their service. Now I just uh, mounted the wide angle lens because I'm gonna get out again and try to take a picture of that tarmac because it has some cracks that could be very interesting to contrast against the mountain uh, and hopefully that, that works. Okay, that was nice. It was a composition that I think is going to work. I'm going to have lunch uh, and think about, you know, my actions and my rec recklessness anyway talking about filters and adapters and stuff is very boring so i'm not gonna bore you anymore with this let's keep going let's keep exploring glencoe and the beautiful landscapes around here
I haven't taken my rubber boots off <laughs> in days. What a beautiful spot. Places like this make you feel good no matter what. This is stunning. It's like being in a postcard, isn't it? Beautiful. It is really cool here. There are some midges, but not that many anymore. It's the end of September. I am so happy about that too. Very, very nice. It made my day. It made me very happy. Well, this drive through Glen Etif, Etif, it's uh, been very slow because there are a lot of uh, cars and it's a very narrow road, so you have to uh, yield to them at these uh, passing places. And I'm always the one yielding, not because I am nicer than them, although I might be, I don't know. I'm actually being a little bit selfish because uh, by stopping here and waiting for them, I have time to actually take pictures because there are no places to stop around here. I am back at uh, Glen Itiv and Loch Itiv, that's how you say it, I think. I didn't get to see much of this place a few days ago. It was rainy and very windy. I'm trying to go for a walk along the shore of the, the, the loch and perhaps I'll find something to photograph. I'm hoping I will, but we will see. I guess we can go that way. It's 
not the most beautiful pier in the world, but I think we can do something here because it will contrast very well against the dark water and the darker landscape, maybe. Well, that was actually pretty good. A uh, short and sweet <laughs> walk but it was uh, productive. I really like the, uh, the shot of the pier. Well, I knew, I knew this was going to happen. I knew I was going to talk myself into taking another shot. Oh man! That is the wrong ND filter. Anyway, as I was saying, I am here taking this long exposure and getting soaked yet again, but I saw those rocks. I thought they, they, they could look good. They are going to look good. All right. Looks nice. It's a little bit overexposed, so I'm going to lower the ISO and take it again. Well, I'm satisfied. I'm happy with what I got here. I think they're gonna be good images, but I'm wet and cold. I'm approaching my 60th day on the road, all of them living in my car. I think it's starting to take its toll. I am tired. I think I need a, a little break and I'm gonna take it very, very soon. You can tell you love doing something when you can do it for two months, non-stop, no weekends, from early in the morning to very late at night and only then you feel like you could take a day off <laughs> but I think a day off will go a long way for me right now and I'll be careful with the video camera man wet again my raincoat is soaked. My camera bag is really wet. Oh, I'm cold. I'm gonna turn on some lights. Oh, so you can see my face and so I can see what I'm doing for dinner. It's gonna have to, to be like that, but yeah, I'm gonna make some dinner because it is raining a lot right now. For dinner, I'm gonna have avocado toast. It's not a toast, of course, it's just a slice of bread. It will do just fine. I mean, to be fair, they had rain in the forecast for the whole day, and we just got it now at 5 p.m. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm just grateful for being here in this beautiful place in Scotland, for having been here for almost two months now. It's, it's been amazing, an incredible adventure. And there's still plenty left. I'm not done with you, Scott, I'm not yet. An onion top to give it a little bit more flavor. And that's it, dinner. I'm gonna have another one of these, of course, but yeah. <laughs> That is the wind. It's moving the car a lot. It's been raining for hours. So this is the bad thing about living in a car during bad weather and when the nights are getting longer and longer because I've been here inside on this seat, <laughs> sitting down here for hours already. And it's only 7.40 p.m. So yeah, there's plenty of night uh, ahead of us. Um, but yeah, I think that life in the car is uh, coming to an end. Uh, on this trip. It's been 53 nights sleeping in the car. I have four left, including tonight. And then uh, after that, I'll, I'll be sleeping on a 
proper bed. Even though this one is pretty comfortable, that's not what I mean. Proper house with walls and roof and you know I can move around and I have light and, and things to do and a proper bathroom. It's been a lot of fun though. Totally worth it for the places I got to go and the the, the places I got to see and enjoy. I was hoping to cross this river because there's supposed to be a nice view up there from an old road but you know it's been raining a lot for the last two days I mean it's been raining since I got here a few days ago but especially the last two days and this morning and this river has way more water that I'm comfortable with trying to cross What a view, huh? Pretty, pretty incredible. I'll get out of, uh, of the way. Well, well, first of all, you're gonna have to excuse my hair. It's just 
very windy here anyway you uh, color photographers are going to kill me because i am leaving now it's a uh, half an hour till sunset and there is a very good chance that the, the sky is going to just explode uh, with colors and that'd be great for color photography but for uh, black and white photography there's not much to do from up here because now the valley is very dark the sky is much brighter so it's just silhouettes of the uh, of the mountains and yeah i filmed for the first year for the bbc video diary series and that was very much a self-filmed project they would just supply the videotape and leave me to it really and i would just and i'd filled a box of 10 tapes i'd post them down to london and they'd post me 10 more tapes and on we'd go and well it's raining again of course it's raining but you know what i don't think i would want it otherwise uh, it is true that i was kind of hoping to do some hike to get on top of uh, some of these mountains even if it's a small one but i don't think i will i would like to be up there right now with this wind especially with this wind and uh, this rain but really photography wise in my opinion this place shines in these conditions with this rain with these uh, clouds that reveal only some parts of the landscape and make it look very mysterious and very dramatic the uh, downside of course is that i'm gonna be stuck in the car for the whole day probably yet another day inside the car the weather has not been good here in glencoe it's been very very windy but as long as i can make photographs even if it's very close to the road very close to the car or even from inside the car i'll be happy one challenge that we have here in the uh, actual glencoe in the valley is the lack of subjects it's a very open very vast space so it's uh, very hard to find something to contrast again against the beautiful mountains so we have to use anything that we can find but the good thing is that in my opinion in these conditions almost anything could work giving a post that i just saw on the other side of the road i'm gonna try it's gonna uh, panorama probably first because there are two mountains on each side and i might be able to i don't know if i want to capture the road as well that could be cool This is truly, truly car photography. And it's hard even from inside the car. Look at that, in just a few seconds. Time to get wet. For a good reason though, it's gonna be worth it, look. See that cottage there? So I've already taken a few photographs of that cottage from here for, uh, during the last two days in very different conditions. But uh, one that I do not have is from farther down the road. And instead of getting the front of the cottage with that mountain in the background, I get more the side of the cottage and the other mountain in the background and it'd be a um, framing better the, the group of trees that is next to the actual building so I think I'm gonna try that I think it's worth getting out even though what I dislike the most is not the weather is that I'm gonna have to walk on the shoulder of the road the good thing is that it's just right there so it's not a long walk on the road at all but well actually I'm having second thoughts <laughs> I opened the door it's just pouring down really bad should i go for it i feel bad because i see i just saw a hiker going by but i mean they're already wet you know <laughs> that's how i look at it i'm not i think it's not raining as bad right now so i'm gonna go for it all right let's do it
that's some incredible light there too so cool Okay, I'm in a position, this is what I saw earlier, but now I gotta say that without the rain there is not that atmosphere that made it look very cool. I'm still gonna try to take the photo. Well, I, uh, I got something that was cool. I am soaked now, but... This is not the image I came here to make, but this is probably the image I didn't know I wanted to make. Yeah, the first shot is this shot because the rain was just behind the cottage, in between the cottage and the mountain, and that creates an incredible, incredibly beautiful effect that I'm not gonna be able to repeat no matter what camera lens filters I use because those conditions don't exist anymore, so. Just wow, the light just came out of nowhere and made this such a beautiful and magical place for just a few seconds. I took a bunch of snapshots, but I don't know if any of those are gonna make for a good photograph, especially in black and white. But what an experience, that is a magical moment. And those are the kind of magical moments that can only happen in conditions like this. This is why I love these conditions. That is not going to happen on a clear and sunny day, that's for sure. Oh. I uh, got something, you know, I got some shots. I'm just hoping that some of them will uh, be good. I'm not 100% sure until I sit down, properly sit down with more time. And without the pressure, you know, of the wind, the rain, the cold, the traffic. No!
Look at these so many waterfalls. I am in the actual village of Glencoe now, in a little park with a great view of the Pap of Glencoe, that's the name of that mountain. It's a beautiful walk. Uh, it is very nice weather right now, so I, it feels great to, to actually walk, stretch your legs with no wind, no rain. Man, I'm getting really wet. Really, really wet. I should have known better by now to never leave the raincoat in the car, even if it's just for a short walk and to never trust the forecast. There was no rain forecasted for the rest of the night and it is uh, pouring down again. So beautiful. No, that's the, the wrong window. Oh, that kind of looks cool. Panorama with the mirror in it. I don't know. Have to try with a wider angle lens. That is so beautiful. And there is a car there at the right place. I want just one car, one set of lights. And that'd be so cool. It might be too small in the frame, I don't know. I think it looks amazing in the uh, the panorama. Oh my god, that looks so cool. Yeah, seeing it here on the screen, it looks so cool. Still 6.30 p.m. but I might want to get ready uh, to go back there because it's not raining as much now, it's not as windy and you never know when uh, another blizzard is gonna come. This is not stopping anytime soon so I'm gonna have to just climb to the back of the car. It's only the second or third time that I have to do this on this trip. I'd rather not do it this way, but sometimes it's what it takes. I can't wait until I can back up all my photos to the cloud or uh, upload all the videos because as of right now, yeah, I have multiple copies, but all the copies are here with me in the car, so if something where to happen. I guess if something happens to the car in that way that everything gets destroyed, maybe the videos and the photos is, uh, are the least of my concerns. Good 
morning. It's um, early, uh, but this is the third night that I spent along this road. Well, first of all, because as you can see, it's a beautiful place. The landscape here is incredible. I'm, I'm going to miss waking up to this every morning. But the main reason to, to stay around here is because there are a couple of lakes not too far from here. And I was hoping to get a calm morning, windless morning, to get some reflections on those lakes of the mountains around. I can take long exposures on a windy day, but the reflections are not there. They are not the same. And today is going to be my only shot at that. There is a little bit of a breeze, but judging by that big puddle there and the reflection of the rock and the mountain, I might get what I was uh, waiting for, if the clouds are not blocking the mountains, of course. Anyway, I will never know if I don't try, so let's go. It feels so weird, though, to be here with no wind whatsoever. I know how long I've been here in Glencoe, but like a week maybe even more I'm, I'm not even sure but it's been super windy every day doesn't feel like the same place at all Not too bad, I can work with this. Um, I'm gonna do it quickly, just in case the wind picks up and before the sun rises uh, above those or it starts hitting those mountains too. I don't want harsh light for this, but the conditions right now are perfect. I just need to find something, a rock. I see some rocks there, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to get there or a tree or something to put in front of those mountains in the lake and it will be a very nice image. It will be a very nice way to, to start the morning, to start the day. Done my first test shot in one minute, just to see how everything looks, the clouds, the water, reflections, everything. Oh man, that is looking nice. So beautiful. It's not perfect. The reflections are not perfect because there are uh, again, there is a little breeze, so there are some ripples, but it is very, very close, and I think it's as close as I'm going to get it on this trip. I'm going to keep walking, if that's what you call this. My God, this is just mud everywhere. But I'm gonna keep doing this along the shore to see if I can find something else besides that rock that was beautifully positioned there. It reminds me of, uh, of a couple of images that I made uh, a few years ago in um, um, Lake Tahoe on the uh, Nevada side. There were some boulders, some round uh, rocks in the water that look pretty cool against a very similar backdrop with mountains. Look at this. It is the cutest, tiniest beach. There are more rocks around here, so I can play with the same idea for a little bit. All right, so I've been working <laughs> the same scene for a while now. This is probably the best composition I've found. The problem that I had with the previous ones 
was that the um, some of the three rocks that I'm trying those three rocks are uh, would fall on the shade of the mountains the reflection you know of the mountains and the water and I want them uh, to be dark against the whiteness of the water and then have the backdrop My goodness, what a night. I mean, I've been awake on and off since two in the morning. That was the first time I woke up. It was windy last night when I went to bed, but nothing like during the night and right now. It is very, very, very windy. The car was shaking the whole night and it's, it's very loud, of course. So yeah, not the um, best way to spend the night. My last night here in Glencoe. Today's my last day. I think I'm gonna leave because I don't really know where to go around here with this wind so I must just drive around to places I haven't been to yet uh, hoping to find something. I guess this is a uh, goodbye. Glencoe is an amazing beautiful place. I only scratched the surface. So much left to explore. I hope to come back one day and do it. But it's time to move on. There are more places to explore here in Scotland and it's time to move on from this lifestyle I've been having for the last two months, from this way of traveling across Scotland. I'm gonna change that significantly from today because I don't know if you could tell from this video, but it's been taking its toll, especially during the last few days, and I think the weather didn't help. That is going to change, and I think it's going to help both my photography and my mental health. I can't wait to tell you all about it in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and see you then.